Um, so my name is Devin Noonan. Um, I'm an associate professor at the Duke School of Nursing. I am a nurse scientist by training, and I'm also one of the program directors representing the School of Nursing at Duke. Um, so before we start with some introductions of my other NCSP colleagues, I just want to go over a few housekeeping items. So first, we just ask that you mute your microphone if you're not speaking, and you can feel free to have your camera on or off, whatever is most comfortable for you. Um, a little overview of our time. So we have our time broken into three 20-minute intervals. So the first 20 minutes, we'll do some introductions of our NCSP colleagues on the call with us. And we'll do a brief presentation about the program. Our second 20-minute um, interval will go into questions and answers from you all. So you can put questions in the chat throughout the presentation. You also can raise your hand during the question time, and we'll do our best to um, field those questions in order of the hand raise. Um, this, as you heard, the seminar is recorded. So, so um, we will send out the link of the recording as well as the slides, as well as all of our email addresses here of our NCSP colleagues after the info sessions that you'll have. So we encourage you to reach out with any questions that you still may have after um, our time together. All right. Um, with that, I think we'll start with some further introductions. So I think we'll start with you, Ivelisse. Sure, just unmuting myself there. So hi, everyone. So lovely to see all of you. My name is Ivelisse Figueroa, and I'm the Central Administrative Director for NCSP. So basically, I am the national office for NCSP. I help coordinate initiatives across the six sites and just help us keep connected. Pleasure to see you all today. Thank you. And then we'll have Marilyn. Hi, everybody. Welcome. My name is Marilyn Shapira. I'm a professor of medicine and general internal medicine at Penn and an associate director of the program at Penn. I'm also the VA liaison, uh, one of the VA liaisons for the program and the liaison at Penn. So welcome. We have four scholars here with us today. I, I'm, we have my first scholar, I was going to say was Lily. I'm just not sure if she's here because I have to brag that she had a meeting at her site with Anthony Fauci. So they are running slightly behind. So it looks like I think I saw Mike say she is not here yet. So I will go to Sherry to introduce. Good afternoon, everyone. It's, it's great to see so many people interested in NCSP. Um, as Dr. Noon said, my name is Sherry Conley. I'm a first year nurse scholar, PhD prepared nurse at the University of Michigan. Um, should I stop there or do we want a little more information now? Okay, and so my interest and in why I decided to do NCSP, it, there were a couple of reasons. Um, one, it's a pretty flexible program. You have the opportunity to kind of pick and choose what you want to do that really fits what you're interested in pursuing and that doesn't necessarily have to be what you've done in the past. If you've done a PhD, you can kind of branch out and explore some new areas. The other thing that really got me interested in NCSP that I thought was unique is the focus both on health services research. So I was interested in gaining more um, skills in quantitative research, but also merging that with the focus on equity and community-based uh, research and projects um, as well. And then also the, the underlying interest and focus on policy. So those are things that, that brought me to NCSP. Thanks, Sherry. Uh-huh. Jess? Hi, everybody. I'm Jessica Thies. I am uh, a scholar at uh, UCLA. Um, I am an emergency medicine trained physician, and I moved from um, the Northeast. I currently... So... Um, in, in terms of what brought me to NCSP, I trained at a county program. I absolutely loved it. Um, but in my work, I knew I was just going to need more statistical, methodological training. And um, NCSP really like 
hit all nails in terms of what I was looking for for career development. Um, and I've been happy with it so far. Um, my current projects involve increasing access to care for patients with Medi-Cal and or California Medicaid insurance um, at UCLA, um, as well as looking at structural racism as it manifests in the pathway to medical school. Um, so really excited for um, this session and to chat towards the end and hear all the questions you have. Mike. Um, hey, every, every, everybody. Um, hi, hi, Andy. Um, you know, way back from the prime days. Uh, I, I'm Michael Mensum uh, from Scranton, Pennsylvania. I'm a psychiatrist. I'm sorry I was late before. Um, Lily and I were at a, a, a session with uh, Dr. Fauci, and this is, this is proof. You know, right here, you see Mr. F Dr. Fauci in you know, the blue background, and he did have handlers. Who, who, who escorted them off the Zoom um, as soon as the meeting was over. So um, I could go into my research interests. You know, I like, I care about health equity. I want to learn more about data and, and how to manipulate it. But really, honestly, I, I think racism in healthcare is a, a huge problem and I wanted more time to think about solving it. So NCSP gives you that time and whatever your interest is, you're going to figure out whether you're actually interested in it or not. So. Um, that takes you away from the hustle and bustle of training or being an attending, and, 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 and that's fantastic. That's why I'm here. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. And Lily, are you here? Hi, all. It's so wonderful to see you all here, and we are thrilled that you're interested in applying to the NCSP. I have the good fortune of being a co-scholar with Mike Mensa, and I hope to be a resource in any way I can. I'm a second year scholar, a psychiatrist. I do community partnered research to increase access to COVID-19 vaccines in the communities that have been hardest hit by the pandemic. And NCSP really afforded me two years to dive into CBPR, but also find my passion for public health. I'll be headed to the CDC's Center for Preparedness and Response following graduation. And yeah, we're just so happy you're here. Thanks, Jessica. Congrats, Lily, and thanks so much. Um, I think I failed to mention that our applicants will get some dedicated time with our scholars at the end of this presentation to be able to ask them more questions about their time in the program. So, all right, so moving forward, I am going to pull up my slides. Just give me a second. Devin, while you do that, I'm just going to also note that also on this call is one of our Yale colleagues, Karen Angela Cola, who is an administrator at the Yale site and who has been the one handling all the registration for this, is handling the tech side, and we couldn't make this happen without her. So thank you, Karen. Well, thank you, Ivelisse. All right, so let's jump in. <clears throat> So our NCSP program goals are to train nurse and physician scholars. And I think that's what's one of the unique things about our program is it's co-training nurses and physicians side by side who can advance health and healthcare through scholarship and action, who work as leaders and collaborators within multiple sectors, including in the community and healthcare systems, government foundations, think tanks, as well as academia. We train scholars that can develop and evaluate new models of care um, in acute care settings and in the community to achieve higher quality health and health care at a lower cost. And then we also train scholars who will cultivate health equity through their work um, and who will work to eliminate health disparities, confront structural racism, and other structural inequities in health and health care. So as I said, we are an interprofessional program. So our two-year postdoctoral fellowship co-trains nurses and physicians focusing, and you heard some of this through the work of our scholars focused on today's most pressing challenges in health and healthcare. We train scholars to do research to create effective change that improves care for patients and communities within clinical care delivery systems, within care delivery systems in the community, within healthcare system, health system organizations, excuse me, as well as training and work that focuses on local and national health policy. So we are a national program. We grew from the legacy Robert Wood Johnson um, Clinical Scholars Program. Um, and that was a program that focused traditionally on training MD scholars. Now we have include nurses. And so we include six sites that you can see here. We have UCLA, University of Michigan, University of Pennsylvania, Yale, Duke, and UCSF. 
Um, so given we are a national program, we have a single application and a single sort of selection process. <clears throat> So because we are a national program, it gives us the unique opportunity to not only grow those networks and collaborations within the site you attend, but also across all six sites. And so any fellowship is about building that network and those collaborations. And I feel like NCSP really has that unique aspect that you can develop them within and then across, which is just such a wealth of resources for us. So again, we're a national network of scholars, a huge alumni base as well. We have a committed national program board, and we have our annual national meeting that brings all the sites together where we have a chance to sort of foster those connections, collaborations, learn about the work that is going on at other sites, um, and then just spend time together thinking about some of these pressing health challenges. So we also really foster the connection at the site. So you will matriculate with a cohort of five to 10 scholars, and you'll really spend a lot of time with this cohort um, in um, seminars and courses, and you'll really build those professional as well as personal connections within your cohort. And I can best speak for the Duke site, but our scholars um, do research together, they publish together, and they continue to do so when they leave the program. And I know that's the same at, at all six of our sites. And each site has a really strong investment in mentorship. And so you will be um, assigned a mentor, a mentorship team um, at whatever site that you attend. It really works with you to develop a plan to grow your research, your writing, your publications, your grants, and help you decide where's next and where your career um, is going. So what we do during these two years here, so our training is really focused around providing you training in rigorous research design. We are a research fellowship. We also provide training to make sure scholars develop a nuanced understanding of how the health system and social factors affect health and healthcare. We provide training in stakeholder engagement as well as community engaged research. We have a strong focus around health policy and a strong emphasis on outcomes and the impact of our research. <clears throat> I won't read everything on this slide, but we really do provide training in a diverse skill set over these two years that ranges from qualitative and quantitative clinical research methods, implementation science, um, as well as developing policy relevant research. <clears throat> so I think this sort of gives a sort of visual of sort of the breadth of the work that our scholars are doing in the program here. And then you heard that as well from what our scholars told you a little bit about their work that they're doing, that it really does range. And like, I think it was Mike who said, or I think all the scholars said, you can pursue your passions in this program. And I think that that's evident by the breadth of work we see here in some recent scholar publications. <clears throat> so another unique aspect of our program is our collaboration with the VA. So the VA is a strong community partner of our program. So annually, um, they support NCS fellows who have a commitment to conducting research addressing health and policy issues, who are interested in conducting research that is relevant to veterans as well as re reflecting, excuse me, the priorities of the administration. And NCSP fellows have the opportunity to participate in activities at their designated VA medical centers at each of the sites. All right, so moving on to some more um, Practical information, I guess. So eligibility, who's eligible for the program? So nurses who have completed their doctoral degree within the past five years, and that includes PhD or DNP. And then physicians who have completed their clinical training within five years of the time of application. And for our general surgeons, they would take this fellowship within their research years. And you may have seen this figure on our, app, on our website, but this is sort of our app application and selection timeline. So our application is open. It opened on May 2nd. So I encourage you to check out the application and apply. The application will close on July 15th at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Between August 22nd and September 3rd, um, we will conduct interviews. And just to note, all our interviews are conducted remotely. On October 3rd, um, after you interview at the sites that you've applied to, you will submit your site preferences. 
And by mid-October, you will be notified of acceptance with the matriculation of July 2023. And you can find all this information as well as further details on our websites that, that's indicated here. So these are just some photos, action shots of, of, of all of us interacting with each other. And um, at this point, I'm going to open for questions that you may share. So you can either put those in the chat um, or you can raise your hand and team help me monitor here for folks raising their hands. Sure thing, Devin. I believe we have a hand up here. Deborah Oyeyemi. I apologize if I'm saying your last name wrong, Deborah. That was actually perfect, Lily. <laughs> um, hi, sorry. Um, I, my camera's off. I'm at a conference in like a little quiet corner. Um, but uh, I'm a second year resident in, in primary care at Yale currently, uh, very much interested in the program. And one question I had was just about how defined our project needed to be. Um, in the application stage and whether or not we should be looking for potential mentors at various sites. Well, I can start with that and maybe others can chime in. Um, I think at this point, you just have a general idea of the things you're interested in. I think um, Mike alluded to the fact that sometimes those things change actually drastically during your time in the program. So I think we're re looking for people who really are interested in sort of the tenets of our program and doing research within that area and scholarship in that area. And I'll open it to others to sort of um, build on that. Well, maybe I could just chime in. What we want to hear about in your application are the general areas that you may have a passion to study and not so much a defined research plan. So if you can outline some of the areas of your interest, maybe some of the methodologies, maybe just some of the questions that you really want to address. Um, that's really what we want to hear about. And as far as mentorship, that helps us to think about what mentors might be good for you at our site. Uh, we don't expect you to have a defined mentor or specific people in mind uh, for the programs necessarily on the application. I, I, can, I can chime in with the, uh, oh, uh, Jessica, go ahead. Please, please, please go first. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you so much, Mike. Although I'm really looking forward now to your comments. Um, so Deborah, that was a great question. Honestly, I was very concerned about that as well when I was applying because my research background was not strong at all. Um, but obviously Devin and Marilyn made pretty clear that it's really more about the ideas than it is you, you know, the actual methodology and how you're gonna carry it out. Um, I like to think about it as like, if I knew how to do that perfectly, I probably wouldn't need to do the fellowship. <laughs> so, um, and I do remember reaching out to Lily for advice as well on this and she was had a similar answer. And, it all worked out. So um, definitely focus more on, um, I mean, cr creating like, ver I guess, writing down a, a coherent idea and like being clear about what you're passionate about. But I wouldn't stress too, too much about um, the nitty gritty details because it doesn't seem like that's what they're looking for. Deborah, does that answer your question? Yes, that was perfect. Thank you guys okay, so much. Thanks. thanks for jumping up for the first question. And Mike, did you want to, did you want to add to that? I know you're, you're oh yeah, Mike. Oh yeah. Um, I was just gonna say, uh, you know, um, it's it's really you know choose your own adventure with regard to with regard to that. I think having a well formed project is 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 nice if that's what you want to develop. Uh, but I also think that you know in being exposed to so many different disciplines in NCSP and um, at Yale as well, um, I think you'll you'll come to find that you're gonna find different paths to different projects based on, I don't, I don't even know what your project's about, but I'm sure there's different uh, branch off points for it. So I would say, you know, reaching out to mentors is, is, is usually a good idea and I, I would recommend that, but I would also say that, you know, your NCSP candidacy will be judged on many other factors besides, you know, a one particular project. So um, I think it's, 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 it's nice to do for the project's sake, but not for NCSP's sake. 
Yeah. And Deborah, I think you won't have any problem with this at all, but just making sure, like Jessica mentioned, your passion is really clear because often what you write about in your essay will be what you discuss in your interviews. And I think they're, you know, when you're excited about something, we get excited about it too. And I think we, the cool thing about NCSP is we all are passionate about very different things. And we, we love hearing about what you're passionate about. I thought I could maybe, thank you, um, maybe jump in and answer Brian's question um, about the VA funded spots. Each of the six programs has VA uh, support for their scholars. Um, they can vary, the, the specifics can vary across sites. So we're really encouraging you during your visits um, when you interview to really ask specifically about the sites with regards to the VA um, structure and so on um, at each site. And I can jump in and answer some of these other questions and Ivelisse, um, feel free to chime in too. But, but we are an in-person program and an on-site program. Um, so, you know, how much time is spent remote versus in-person I think can vary slightly depending on the activity. But given that there is the clinical component, we are an in-person sort of on-site fellowship training program. And then bridging off that, I think there was a question about the clinical activities and the clinical activities are designated at the sites that you're at. Um, currently, they range for a time commitment from 10% to 20% of your time. And again, those vary based on your discipline as well as your background. And um, they'll definitely be dug into more during, at the interviews at each specific site. Caroline, I might have you take the question about MD candidates within five years of medical school or residency, if you don't mind. Oh, is that for me, Devin, are you saying? Yes. So yes, that would be within five years of completion of residency training. Um, and again, for surgeons, surgical candidates, they come during their residency. And I did want to mention, uh, mention for the RNs, we understand a lot of you are graduating the June before you start here. So it doesn't have to be completed before that time, but anticipated to have your degree at the time that you begin. I think I just saw a question. Is it Brenda Thomas? Yeah, I'm still kind of formulating it. Can you come back to me? <laughs> of course, of course. There were a lot of questions in the chat about virtual versus in-person, it looks like. Um, sorry, I don't mean to jump in if someone else is gonna moderate the question box. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I can imagine that it's different at every site. Um, and obviously this has been a little bit fluctuating too with the, pan with the pandemic. Um, you know, there's times that they decide to open and then <laughs> close again um, in terms of like in-person classes. Um, I think, it's, so it's pretty flexible. There are things that have been um, moved to in person, but especially um, like with the masters, it's a little you, depend, you know, depending on your schedule and um, life and whatnot. I have found it pretty easy to plan around it. Like right now, I'm at a conference and like had to make some things work, but um, like for travel purposes. Um, but I think that largely things are moving towards in person, but it's like once or twice a month in terms of like a program required in-person thing and then the rest is uh, like flexible with the masters i know it's a, it's a little complicated but um i guess the answer is that it's not like fully in person i do feel like also in this day and age a lot of um programs have transitioned to have hybrid options so um you know i'm not sure that you could do the entire program remotely from a different city but you there's definitely flexibility. I can also add that because the one of the main goals of the NCSP program is relationship building and network building for Michigan, they really want us to be in person for that purpose, you know, alone, just so that we really get to know one another and we have offices that are together. Um, so they, they prefer, although most of my first year has been remote, um, they felt like 
you know, by being in person, you really get something extra. So I think the preference will be to be in person if possible. I am ready now. <laughs> um, I'm an I'm an advanced practice registered nurse, and I'm finishing my PhD most likely next August. So I wouldn't qualify for this round, but um, I'm just considering. You know, if I did start in July of 2024, is there anything you recommend that I do in that year um, gap to prepare? And my other question is, what are scholars doing post fellowship? Like, are they going on to tenure track? research careers? Are they going into, I guess I just don't know what, what health policy careers look like in a practical way. So I can start with that and Marilyn, I'm going to have you chime in too. But first I would say that um, we have had some nurses finish their PhDs in August and we've been able to get um, them the ability to, meaning the degree is conferred in August, but you, oh, you know, you defend in June and they've been able to start. So I wouldn't count out. I would definitely follow up with me or Marilyn after this about being able to apply this round first off, I would say. Um, and then <clears throat> I'll speak to the, um, where the scholars go. Um, so I think it's a mix of our nursing scholars. Um, many of them go into academia. However, at Duke, we have a graduating scholar who is taking a job as a policy analyst at the ICN, and she'll start there in July. So I think it is varied about what these, um, what the positions look like. And one of the things we've been really focused on in nursing is exploring non-academic career tracks. So we actually have a monthly summit cross-site seminar where we bring in um, nurses who did not go the academic route so we can learn about these different tracks that they take and so on. Um, Marilyn, I'll let you go back. I would, thank you. I would just say that the program certainly prepares you if you want to take a traditional academic track and be competitive for that. But many of our scholars do go into government as their initial or, you know, we heard CDC, Medicare, Medicaid positions and other um, Department of Public Health, either at the city, state or sometimes public health at the national level. So um, and some hybrid positions. So there's really a large range that we consider very successful um, outcomes for our scholars. Uh, but we do we try to prepare you for any of those paths. Um, that's great. Thank you. Maybe yeah, I know Hexie has been had her hand. I hope I have that name correct. But maybe Hi. Hexie. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Um, it's really inspiring to hear how passionate everyone is. I'm a child psychiatry fellow um, in Philadelphia, and I have an, a fine arts background. So I'm really interested in um, kind of interdisciplinary research. And I'm wondering about the research methods, is it mostly um, quantitative or is there kind of uh, room to, to kind of innovate or be sort of non-traditional uh, in terms of, of the approaches? Thank you. Does one of the scholars want to answer? I could just add, quickly say that it is very interdisciplinary across qualitative and quantitative methods. Um, and I think it differs somewhat the actual structure across the programs, but uh, we try to give you at Penn and I think at most programs, some basic um, training across a range of methods. And then you go deeper into certain areas. Maybe one of the scholars wants to speak to that. I can also add just very quickly um, and then definitely want to defer to our scholars on the call um, that we actually had in the past couple of years, uh, one of our fellows who was a physician who was very interested in sort of the nexus of, of music and healing and treatment. And so, so people come at this from lots of different ways. So he was coming from um, sort of the, the arts world in that respect. So there, there are lots of ways to, um, to get at the things you're interested in. I would say for Michigan, I feel like the foundation of our research methods, our, our health services, quantitative, really, um, good training. It's amazing if you're coming, especially from a PhD program, how much can get packed into one year. 
Um, and so I think you get the, the starter pack of statistics and a little bit of epidemiology, but then you also get some more sophisticated quantitative methods. And then within that, we also look at qualitative methods. We have dedicated qualitative researchers that come and talk about, talk us through the whole entire um, how you do a qualitative project, how you analyze it, what you do with the data. They also put in modules for mixed methods um, and give resources. And they really walk you through how to do those things. And so they give you starting tools and help you if you're already thinking maybe it's something that you want to do, give you some practice in actually starting to form, to formulate a project and you can go over that project in class and then connect with additional resources that can help you fully flesh out the project and then at times figure out if, if you need funding where you might go for funding sources as well. So I would say our, our biggest foundation is quantitative health services, but then they also at Michigan mix in qualitative mixed methods and then give you resources to explore anything further that you're interested in. There's a few questions, thank you, a few questions that have come up about clinical work. So I thought I would just say something briefly about from the physician point of view and then Devin, maybe you could talk about our end point of view. But we try, currently we have between 10 and 20% of time of clinical work and we really work with the scholars to decide you know, what settings they would like to work in in their given field, um, outpatient primary care or inpatient as a hospice, for example, I think are available at most sites. And those in the surgical fields, we work with their departments and the scholar to figure out what skills they want to maintain or focus on during this time. So we have some flexibility there. And Devin, perhaps you want to speak about some of the RN clinical opportunities. So the nursing clinical opportunities really vary um, and it depends really on the background of the nurse coming in. So we have scholars who are practicing in the traditional clinical practice world. We have a scholar now who is an NP working at the VA. Um, we have another scholar working as an RN in our population health management office. And then it ranges on the other side as well for those with um, less clinical experience doing more QI sort of health care based projects. So looking at um, processes of care and evaluating them. So we have a scholar that is um, evaluating a nurse driven program in the VA currently. Um, so again, the sites, wherever you land, the site will work with you based on your experiences, your expertise to develop that clinical site that's best for you in your career. For questions, I'm looking at the chat. Looking at the one about education. Marilyn, there is one question in the chat that just uh, sought further clarification that said um, for the MDs, um, their clinical training that has to be completed within the past five years prior to the application, does that include fellowships or only residency? It's really the end of your clinical education, so it could include fellowship as well. Um, and I noticed there was a question about the CV on the application. Um, we don't have a specific format for the CV. Uh, a lot of the application itself asks for some specific information in structured fields, but um, we, there's not a specific CV format. Yes, thanks, Marilyn. Yes, you'll notice on the application that we've noted a couple of bullets, things that might not already be in your CV, probably typically are things like, you know, foreign language, if you happen to have that award and so forth. So we just make some bullets of things to include as well, if it's relevant to you, but you can use your own format for the CV. Thank you all. It looks like we have a program. So how is the program funded? So it, the program is internally funded now. It is no longer funded by RWJ. And I think there's nuances at each of the sites about how that exactly works. Um, many times it involves, um, you know, T32 grants as well as HRSA grants as well to sort of supplement the internal funding that funds the program. 
Yes, and some, some sites have small endowments, they have partnerships with health systems. So it does, as Devin said, it varies by site. So, um, but so every site will have a, a different combination of, of funding efforts, but scholars do receive a stipend. And just to be clear, um, internal funding is, means in the university of each site, right? Okay. And I would, I would advise each scholar to go on the website and take a look at, there are some salary differences by site based on um, several factors. So um, I would take a look at that, especially considering, you know, those of, those of y'all who um, are concerned about that should look at that for sure. And to answer the question, the master's degrees are funded at the sites. I think what varies is whether the master's is required at some sites and it's optional at others. Is there an email where people can email their questions as well if they happen to have some after the session? Yeah, we're gonna send out the emails of all of our NCSP folks on the call. So feel free, because we have about two minutes left for questions and then we'll transition to the scholar only piece, but echoing Mike, definitely email with any questions. Yes, so as, as has been uh, noted, we'll be sending out the email addresses of all the facilitators and also the, the national NCSP email address if you have something you feel isn't aimed at one particular person, but sort of a general question, you can also send there. So we'll make sure we include that as well. Um, Lyle? Yeah, thank you. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. So um, this may be a little um, too complex of a question. We may have to sort of follow up afterwards, but um, I may be a slightly uh, unique candidate or, or um, potential applicant um, because I, um, so I'm currently a, a faculty um, uh, at an academic medical center and um, I'm doing, um, sort of early career health services research. Um, and so I'm very interested in looking, so during my, my time as a faculty, I've discovered, it turns out medicine is very complicated and, um, and our current health system is, um, um, has a, a lot of opportunity for improvement. Um, so I, I have very specific questions, very specific research interests. Um, I have collaborations at uh, a number of uh, sites um, that uh, the work with the NCSP, um, but for my purposes, um, I'm interested in applying to some uh, specific sites and, and looking for very um, specific and strategic opportunities to to um, spend focused time, concerted time, working on my um, my um, areas of interest. So I guess my question is: um, Is there a way through this process uh, for me to? Um, have a sense that, that that opportunity will, will be available um, and have a sense of um, um, the likelihood of, of moving into, um, moving into um, I guess, acceptance, because for me, it would, it would mean sort of leaving a faculty position and moving. Um, and I would hope that that move would be very strategic and very, very um, um, uh, productive. Um, does that make does that make sense? I I think I think it having to do with the time frame might be the issue for you. But if you meet the criteria for the program, you know we do have this time frame. You can apply to specific programs. You don't have to apply to the program as a whole. You can list those you're interested in, and in your application, you can be specific. You know, and I think you'll get a good sense of if you're invited to interviews if that meets that program's need, you know, uh, the capacity of that program. Right, okay. Is that, I'm not sure if that answers your question, but feel free to follow up with us, you know, because yeah. we'll be sending out all the emails and feel free to, you know, contact any of us for more detail. Yeah, I appreciate that. And, I, and it was difficult to kind of articulate it, so, but yeah. I think that's, um, that's the answer I was looking for. Okay, great. Well, I'm looking at the time here, it is 12.41. So as I'm echoing Marilyn and everyone else, please email with any other questions that you don't get answered in this time. And we will definitely um, send the slides as well as the recording. But at this point, we'll transition to your scholar only time. But it was fantastic to spend this time with you all. And please, like I said, reach out with any questions. We look forward to hearing from you. 
Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah. Thanks, Devin. So, as Devin said, our faculty will go offline and we'll go into a breakout with uh, just the scholars, uh, you all, applicants, and I will be in there. And we're doing that in part because we want you to have feel free to to ask questions without any of the people who will actually be reviewing your application in the room, which we know sometimes there's a different level of comfort in that in having not having those people on. So. And we're waiting. Karen has um, invited us to join the breakout. So please hit join and we'll move into that.